The letters of Jesus' brothers were so dangerous that for hundreds of years the church fathers refused to include them in the Bible. They were only finally accepted because the oral traditions concerning Jesus' family were so strong. There were some Christian leaders who said, well, James, I don't know if we should include him. Now, he's the brother of Jesus. Why wouldn't you want his letter? Because if you read the letter, it doesn't have the gospel that people came to associate with Christianity. In complete contrast to today's Christianity, the letters of Jesus' brothers describe him as their master, but not divine. They see Jesus as a human character blessed by God. The thing about the book of James, it's the teachings of Jesus, but not the teachings about Jesus. James passes on what he got from his brother. You could say it has no theology. The seventh stage. And yet it does have a theology, but it's the theology of Jesus. But it's no theology about Jesus in that book. It doesn't mention the cross of Christ. It doesn't mention the blood of Jesus doesn't mention forgiving sins through believing in the Lord, our Savior, who's in heaven. Nothing like that. It's an amazing book to read. This alternative version of Jesus' message can be found in other texts too. In the Greek quarter of the old city of Jerusalem, there is another ancient book that was not included in the Bible. It's one of the most contested of early Christian documents, possibly even older than the Gospels themselves. I believe it is the key to understanding Jesus' original message. I'm very sorry that the library is not in its proper situation. Because... The Library of the Greek Patriarch has the only complete copy of an ancient handbook specially written for converts to Christianity that was compiled when Jesus' family was still alive. The Didache gives a direct insight into what the very earliest Christians thought and did. It has never before been filmed. Can I hold it? Yes. Wow. This is like being close to the early church. Of course. Wow. And, and um, I'm not using gloves, is that okay? It's okay. It's I'm okay. not using the sword. Yes. Wow. The book begins here. Although the OEC, mea to zoeis ke mea to thanatu, there are two ways, one of the life and one of the death. The Didache, or teaching, contains a code of Christian ethics based on the original teachings of Jesus and some instructions as to the proper forms of worship. There is a great difference between the two ways. But what makes it so dangerous for today's Christianity is what it leaves out. There is no mention of the virgin birth, no mention of the resurrection, and above all, no mention of Jesus as God. They talk of Jesus in here as Lord and not Lord God, suggesting that they saw him as being more human than divine. How does that strike you? In my opinion, in the evangelists, in the Gospels, and in the works of apostles, uh, there is a balance uh, between the presentation of uh, Christ as the Son of God and as the Son of a man. The Lord to whom we believe is uh, divine, but he is human. And that's the problem. For 2,000 years, the church has grappled with the balance between Jesus' divine and human natures. But it is the divine that has dominated. In the process, it is Jesus' essential humanity and the humanity of his teachings that has been lost. The Didache also contains a detailed description of a very early communion service. Unlike today, there is no suggestion that the bread and wine are the body and blood of Christ. In fact, Jesus is referred to, not as God's son, but his servant. And concerning the broken bread, we thank you, our Father, for the life and knowledge which you made known to us through Jesus, your servant. To you belongs the glory forever. Do you think that one of the reasons why they don't mention Jesus as Lord God and they don't mention 
the resurrection was because they didn't believe that those events had taken place, that Jesus wasn't the Son of God and that Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, but instead he was a human, a prophet and not divine. It's a dangerous question. In my opinion, uh, the fact of re resurrection of Christ uh, couldn't and shouldn't be ignored. Uh, Paul speaks and says, if Christ uh, was not resurrected, then we shall be accused that we, uh, we speak falsely against God. What is absolutely fundamental to all Christians, including myself, is the idea that Jesus is God. Without that, there is no Christianity. But what is now clear is that the very earliest Jewish Christians, including Jesus' own family, did not see him as God. And ultimately, that is why the church has gone so far to delete them from the Christian story. This is Judas, uh, the brother of the Lord according to the flesh. Jude. Jude, yeah, who has written in, in the Bible, in the letter of Jesus' younger brother Jude, there is an extraordinary passage denouncing a group of people who are secretly corrupting the true faith. For admission has been secretly gained by some who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly persons who pervert the grace of our God. If you decode it, it becomes a clear warning that the new movement was losing sight of Jesus' original message. By the time Jude writes, he could see the writing on the wall. He could see we're losing out. And it's a battle cry. It's a call to arms, spiritually speaking. He's not talking about outsiders. He's talking about people who claim to be part of us that are not teaching what we were originally handed down. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loudmouth boasters, flattering people to gain advantage. And he's getting very worried, and he's telling the little group that would still listen to him. I think, in effect, he's saying, don't listen to all these new things that are coming along. You fight hard for that original faith that was delivered to us, family tradition. Follow the tradition of the family. Almost a mute testimony to what used to be the way. When Constantine the Great made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire 1600 years ago, it was Paul's interpretation of Jesus' message that was adopted. And Paul based his authority on a series of mystical visions. Although he had never met Jesus and only joined the movement after his death, by contrast, James and the rest of the family who had grown up with Jesus, followed his mission and been at his death, their version of Christianity, a vision of Jesus as a more human character, was declared heresy.